In our last episode, we were reintroduced to the Seraphon, a, a general term for several breeds of lizardmen, designed by the mysterious old ones specifically for a purpose. And in today's video, we're going to talk about that purpose more on the old ones, because this battle tome, instead of the first one, really did lean more back on some of the old world lore and that kind of stuff. And I want to talk about it and, and basically how the old ones set up the Seraphon for total war. So let's begin, like I said, with a dive into the old ones and, and something this the latest version of the Battle Tome uh, touched on much more than the original uh, was this, this topic of the Seraphon origins and when where they came from and that kind of stuff. There's still a lot of mystery surrounding that, but I think they really acknowledged, frankly, that uh, that people just love the mystery of the old ones. And so a lot of what we know about the old ones is theory, conjecture, and legend. But what we can surmise is this. At some point long ago, far before uh, the gods that we know of ruled the realms, there was a species of incredible intelligence and power amongst the universe. This species was utterly devoted to fighting the primordial enemy, Chaos. This race that we know as the Old Ones, right? Some uh, legends have them being like these beings of light and energy. Uh, some of them have the uh, old ones flying in these silver ships through the void. Exactly who they were has been long lost to history. The only ones who might possibly know who the old ones really were were the Slon themselves, and they aren't really telling anybody. What we do know about them is that they were a people of incredible intellect, right? They had, and they had this understanding of the fabric of the universe that has yet to be exceeded. Among their accomplishments are the genetically engineered Seraphon, an army specifically designed to fight chaos, which admittedly is a super lofty goal. But this is the plan that they had, and they knew it would take several centuries to reach fruition. The budding race of Seraphon uh, were placed on the old world along with several colossal ziggurats that we'll get to in a second and set to their task. Spawning pools created reinforcements. It's basically how they manufactured new troops. Uh, the Slon themselves were the minds behind the race, and they did their best to contain the spread of chaos. The overarching, you know, name for this mission is the Great Plan. That that little brief paragraph is my sum up of all of the old world lore. There are many YouTube channels out there that have incredible lore on the lizard men, which is what this army was called back in the old world in Warhammer Fantasy Battles. I do suggest you go check them out. There's a lot of rich history there, but I just couldn't research every single version of the old battle book uh, for this video. So go ahead and check it out, but we'll come back here and we'll talk about Seraphon. Because there's a lot of things we don't know, even with that information given, right? We don't know really who the old ones were, uh, how did making this race on the old world help fighting chaos, which transcends like space and time, right? Because the, the chaos realm just doesn't really abide by our rules when it comes to time and space and that kind of stuff. We also don't know what severed the connection between the old ones and the Seraphon. And frankly, we just don't know where they went. All of that is like beyond ancient history. We will likely never get answers. But what is relevant to Age of Sigmar is that many believe the Old Ones had a purpose in the realms as well. That their plan exceeded the Old World and bled into the mortal realms. For example, some think that they were the creators of the Realm Gates, those truly ancient structures allowing movement of incredible distance. And I can see it because it's reasonable to say that these people who had such a grasp of time and space uh, were able to manufacture these, you know, architectural wonders to allow anyone to access it. It's not confirmed, it's like it's like a theory, but it's a really cool one, and I, I would like it if it were true. The Old Ones, as I said, really did seem to be masters of understanding the universe. And this is super evident in the way the Seraphon fight, right? In their creation fights with the weapons that they gave them. And so this is kind of like, you know, channeling the constellations of stars, funneling geomantic energy like they had in the Old World, using the, the Old World's, like, ley lines and that kind of stuff, and the realms now themselves as reservoirs of power and destruction. This shows up heavily in the rules and the lore for Seraphon, where you choose different star alignments to channel different kinds of energies. It's really cool, and it comes down to using the, the literal order, right, the structure, of the universe to fight chaos. In a sense, and this is kind of my own thinking here, they are the most order of order armies. They are 
uh, um, at their core using the opposite of chaos, right? Order to fight chaos. Usually we say order in terms of like a broad word to describe, you know, quote unquote, the good guys and, and good, you know, change that font to some form of gray when you get into like Daughters of Cain. But this is like, no, no, no. In terms of structure and the things that are fundamentally like even, I don't know, spiritually opposed to the nature of chaos, it's these guys. And if I had to harp on a, like, a single word that I think really makes Seraphon unique amongst other races because of their origin story, it's the word design. They were designed to fit into this great plan for getting rid of chaos. And they use the design of the natural universe, that which chaos seeks to corrupt, to fight them. They have their own plans on how to fight chaos that sometimes conflict with uh, the other forces of order. But the Salon have this millennia-long perspective, and they see the big picture. They're not bound by the realms to see this grandiose plan brought to completion. And that right there is my awkward segue to talking about those ships, those ziggurats I mentioned that were in the old world. Because this is a part of the lore that was kind of, it was just barely mentioned a little bit in the in the first edition of the Battle Tome, but they really kind of leaned more into it, and I think it's a very fascinating thing, is talking about the ships, because they are of incredible importance. These mind-bendingly big, like, ziggurat ships allow the Seraphon to sail through the void. And the power of that wasn't really clearly stated before, because I think they were still kind of trying to understand what the realms were, even from, like, the the lore writers and designers' perspective. But while most other factions have to travel great distances or be beholden to realm gates, the Slan have the greatest amount of freedom possible, second only, like maybe, to the gods themselves. When you combine that concept with the overall feel of the army, you get something very special because they have these grand plans and, and rituals meant to steer the course of life in the realms, and they are a limited army, right? There's not Seraphon everywhere in every nook and cranny, like, say, Skaven or, you know, Moonclan Grotz or something like that. And so essentially they act like a strike force. The Slon can say, well, I can see this Chaos Sorcerer is going to interrupt a part of the grand plan. Okay, so we're going to drop in, we're going to take him out, and that'll kind of keep us on course. And they just kind of keep doing that again and again. They're seeing the future, discerning what needs to happen to make this, like, infinitely complex chess game happen. And being able to traverse the realms like no one else, and all these individual, I'm going to call them temples, or the different, like, you know, uh, different Slon groups and, and groups of Seraphon and armies, they're all working together to keep their vision of the grand plan in motion. And among the stars, these ships are incredible. Like I said, very, very large. Could almost be described as a full city among the stars, sort of like how, uh, the carriage and overlords have a skyport this is kind of that same feel the interior is meant to match a form that is pleasing to the cold-blooded seraphon which of course means it's warm humid thick forest big old trees dense landscape there's even like this big main antechamber full of creatures to hunt and corral and this is basically they use this as a training and fighting pit so the skink priests can watch all the lizards make sure everyone is up to snuff when it comes to combat and keep an eye out for prime talent if they want to promote anybody. And it might initially seem like, you know, having a strike force for a grand plan and zooming around the realms in a spaceship is stuff that's just reserved for the Starborn, meaning the ones that don't have much substance and they're like more um, demons of light than they are like actual flesh and blood creatures. But those same core concepts, the, the great plan and using the ships to impact that plan, really also do apply to the Coalesce, and this is something I found very interesting, and I'm glad they went out of their way to kind of give these things a meaning to a different way of interpreting this army. Because sometimes across the realms, the the ley lines and the places of like real arcane power converge, giving them incredible significance. In these instances, the Seraphon may descend from the void, land their ship, sink it deep into the earth, and once again make them look like the temples from the old world. They secure these vital territories uh, that are essential for the great plan, and so the Starborn become coalesced the longer they stay out of Azir. And so that's how, you know, their, their great plan, right, the good, big old grand mission might lead them to stay in one spot, but how do the coalesced, who are pinned in one place, make use of the ship if they don't travel? Well, if you are a fan of science fiction, you may be familiar with an idea called a seed ship. It's basically 
Uh, the idea that a ship can land on an alien world and begin terraforming it, right? Changing the environment into something that's suitable for whatever, you know, people group landed there. Well, the ship itself, this huge zigger, acts as a seed of life with everything its occupants need. This is functionally what these ships turn into. Once they land, that deep rainforest-like atmosphere and fauna that we described within the ship begins to creep outwards. Soon the entire region will become a dense forest, the prime environment for the Seraphon. And this is huge because if there's a location that's important enough that it needs to be held, like at all costs, you know, like I said, ley lines, important, you know, uh, structures and that kind of stuff, then these ships offer transportation to get there. With the added benefit of taking the home field advantage with you wherever you go, right? You're, you're bringing the environment that your Seraphon are most comfortable fighting in to the most important places where the enemy may struggle with that terrain. So we're going to back up here for a hot second and talk about why is this cool. What, what, we talked about the old ones and the ships for the most part for this video because those are things that the, I feel like the first battle tome really missed the mark on. And I think that's more because they hadn't really fully fleshed out the realms in their own minds when they wrote it. But this idea of like, no, 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 we can go back to the idea of the old ones. It doesn't have to be that the Pantheon as we know them is the end all be all. There can be more things. This isn't a he this is a huge universe. You know what I mean? There's things that extend far beyond Sigmar's might. Uh, they've made it very clear time and time again that the gods are not omnipotent. They don't know everything under the sun. So having this other race that, it, you know, they did do the discipline of constantly trying to learn and stuff, uh, exceed them in intelligence is really cool. I like that it, it keeps the Starborn and the Coalesce tied together. They don't feel like two different armies in the same book. Uh, both have these great plans and use these ships to achieve them. One focuses on travel and strike actions, you know, the Starborn because they can move around the stars. The other on terraforming and, and taking and holding these places of immense importance. And the effects of staying or leaving Azir simply adds to their character. It makes them cooler when they do whatever they want to do. What I will say is like, I, when we talked about the first battle tome, I think uh, there's this problem when it comes to, to writing something that's mysterious, right? And this is a pretty well you know documented thing where if you tell all the secrets, they're no longer mysterious. If you don't give enough information, they're not interesting. And I feel like on that spectrum, they leaned more towards the not telling us enough in the, well, I think they leaned hard on that in the first battle tome. Whereas this one, I feel like they kind of nailed it where, you know, they understand that, okay, we as say, you know, for example, like scholars would interact with the Seraphon and get this understanding. Okay, so there is this race called the Old Ones. There's this design to them. And it's a very top, you know, uh, intellectual level of understanding stuff. But we don't know the details or the nitty gritty. There's still a lot of mysteries surrounding the Old Ones, uh, how the Seraphon communicate and fight and that kind of stuff. And I absolutely love it. I think it definitely was a, a, a course correction. People say... Uh, oh, it got redacted or, got you know, that kind of stuff. And it really wasn't. It was just added to. Because all the stuff that was in the first battle tome is still here. We just call them the Starborn. And they just bolted on this other idea of the Coalesced and used the introduction of that second half to really add more to the battle tome. And I think they did a great job. But friends, tell me your thoughts in the description down below. I would love to hear back from you if you're listening to this on podcast form. Thank you so much. Please go ahead and share it and leave a review. It helps immensely. Thank you all so much for watching and listening, and I will catch you in my next episode. Happy Wargaming.